So welcome to our mapping and data visualization course. This is an intermediate level Python course that helps you learn some advanced spatial analytics and also integrate data visualization and build apps and dashboards. I spent most of my career in Google. I was hired as an analyst. Pretty soon I realized that kind of data volumes we were working with needed programming. So I had to learn programming. I started doing Python programming back in 2005 and really loved it. So I spent almost all my career doing Python programming, building data pipelines and working with large data sets. And I want to share some of those best practices that I learned. I also worked with Google Earth Engine and you know help people learn remote sensing. I left Google in 2020 to teach full time. I set up my own academy where I can teach. And since then, data science has become a forefront. So I've been doing a lot of data science work. And one of the core things that I, you need to do is once you analyze the data, you need to see the results. You need to interactively explore the results. And that's what Python allows you to do this very nicely. So we're going to learn about those techniques and also share your work with other people. How do you build apps? I'm a Python programmer. Many of you would be comfortable with Python, but not so much with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's a whole another skill set. Fortunately, Python now allows you to just write Python code that builds an interactive web app. You don't need to learn any of those front-end technologies. And that's really a blessing for people like us who are data analysts. Vigna, you can introduce yourself. Yeah, so I have done my master's in geoinformatics and during my thesis, I started developing interest in automating stuff using Python. Later, I started working with several government and private organizations and I developed a few plugins in QGIS, also automating workflows of GIS and remote sensing using Python. And in special thoughts, I am working on Python, Google Earth Engine, GDAL and all the courses that you are familiar with. So why do we want to use Python for data visualization? Well, most of you already know the need, why you need that, but maybe there are certain use cases which you may not know of. When you're doing data science, the workflow typically involves you read some data and then you say, what does the data look like? So you have to see what the data look like. And then you say, let me analyze this. Let's say I'm doing some flood modeling. I apply my model and I say, let me see the flood extent. And typically if you don't know how to visualize the data, you would download it, convert it to a format, use a desktop GIS to view it, and that's quite cumbersome. It'd be nice to just to say, hey, I did this analysis. I want to see the results right in the environment where I'm analyzing, either in a notebook or in a Python environment. Another thing that you may want to do is this, you're working on some research project. You are trying to figure out a pipeline to create some output. And if your pipeline generates some visual output, you also want to be able to reproduce it. That means you created something, you want to know how to create that. What was the workflow that created that? And if you do this on a desktop environment, it's very hard to document exactly what it did. If you do this using code, the code serves as a documentation. You can reproduce it. If your data source changes, you can quickly update your visualization. So that, that's very important for science and for even in, your, in a company setting where you want to make sure that whatever you did had a solid background. You can use this to ensure your workflow is documented. If you are creating graphics for publications, this allows you to pull in different data sets and create those visualizations that are sometimes much harder to do on other environments. And Python has a lot of interesting libraries that allow you to create these graphics that you can do for your paper publication or for your web publication. If you're creating lots of maps and charts, maybe you want to do something every day. Let's say you're working on some web to know what map looks like, but you need to create this every day. It's hard to kind of do this manually every day, so you can automate that. Python also is really good at working with large data sets. If you have millions or billions of data points and you want to visualize that, typically the desktop environments fail to even load this kind of data. So you can switch to Python and use Python to do the data visualization. And of course, when you're building apps and dashboards, you want your dashboards to show some graphs. You want your apps to show some maps. How do you create that? You need to learn the Python libraries that allow you to interactively explore the data or show some charts from your uh, Oddly, I want to break down the visualization into two parts. Even the course is kind of split into two halves. One is static visualization. So you want to create a graph or a map or some animation. So those I would call it static visualization. That is you create it and that serves as a file. You have a PNG file, JPEG file, uh, animated GIF that is just created and you can embed it in your website or presentation or put it in your report, etc. So this is where you want to create a graphic using Python. That's what you'd call a static visualization. A dynamic visualization would be 
interactive maps. Typically, if you have used Google Maps or some other interactive map mapping system, you can zoom, pan, click on stuff and explore the data. That is more of an interactive visualization. These are typically done using JavaScript and HTML. And doing this is kind of out of reach for many data analysts. But we're going to use Python. There are Python libraries that allow you to write Python code that will describe what you want. And then these libraries will convert it to a JavaScript and interactive app without you knowing how to do this. So this allows users to kind of, you know, have a drop down or click on it and explore the data. This is suitable for building dashboards and apps. Python has many, many libraries for data visualization. I will just give you a kind of lay of the land and what are the different pieces that form the whole landscape. For the static plotting, so you want to create charts and maps as an image or a graphic, you can use this library called matplotlib. This is the, the granddaddy of Python visualization. Almost every Python library is built on top of this. This was a library that was built on top of MATLAB, kind of create a similar workflow that you have in MATLAB in Python. So it follows that kind of structure. It's a very old library. It has got lots of features, but sometimes a little bit hard to work with. But again, you have to learn this if you want to learn data visualization using Python. So we're going to focus most of our course on learning how the MAT project lib is set up so you can use this and build on top of that. Seaborn is kind of a modern version of Matplotlib. It's built on top of Matplotlib. It's designed specifically to make the statistical charting easy. So if you want to do charts like violin charts or box plots, Seaborn makes it much easier to do it. But again, it's built on top of Matplotlib. So once you know how Matplotlib works, you're going to be able to customize and create charts using Seaborn. Altair and Plot9 are kind of the other libraries. Plot9 is based on the ggplot library in R. So if you're coming from R and you like the charting interface there, Plot9 provides a similar interface in Python. These are kind of generic libraries. They, some of them can do geospatial stuff like maps, but there are geospatial mapping libraries, which are again, built on top of this, but again, specifically designed for doing spatial stuff like working with projections. Cartopy is allows you to work with different projections and create maps in different kinds of projections. If you want a globe, it's much harder to do this using Matplotlib alone. Cartopy says, give me a projection, give me the globe, and I'll create a globe for you and render data on top of it. So if you're working with any geospatial data, Cartopy allows you to work with it much easier. Context tiling is a, a library that allows you to add base maps. Remember when you open a desktop GIS and it's blank, you add some data, you don't know where you are. You want to add some base map like OpenStreetMap or Google base map. Context tiling allows you to add that to your base map. So it allows you to pull in any web tiles data and render it in your plot. There are GeoPlot and MatPy, again, built on top of Matplotlib. Specific, MatPy is specifically to fill metrological data. It just makes it easy to do all of this. We're going to cover Matplotlib, Cartopy, and Context tiling during our course. Once you kind of get familiar with all of this, others should be very easy for you to pick up because they follow the similar structure. And again, most of them are built on top of Matplotlib. So once you understand and learn that, you'll be able to say, okay, now I have a chart. I want to change it. You can use the Matplotlib technology to understand and change it. On the interactive mapping side, there are a lot of web mapping libraries. If you have used any interactive maps on the web, you know there are libraries like Leaflet and OpenLayers. These are the kind of the core open source mapping libraries. If you created any maps using any web platform, they are internally probably using Leaflet OpenLayers to display the data. We have Plotly, which is interactive charting library. There are modern libraries like TechGL, which allows you to explore really large amounts of data in the browser very, very effectively. So you can render billions of points easily using TechGL and KeplerGL. CZMGS is a library for doing 3D globes. If you remember Google Earth, so CZMGS allows you to create kind of Google Earth like globes, interactive globes in your browser. There are commercial libraries like Mapbox and Google Maps API and ArcGIS API. Again, they all are allow you to take some geospatial data, render it in the browser, and allow you to explore that. This Libraries are typically done in JavaScript. So if you want to use, let's say, DeckGL, you need to write some HTML page, add, write some JavaScript code, and then you have a map. And this requires a whole new skill set. So on the Python world, people have taken these libraries, wrapped them around in Python packages. So you can say, I want a map. I want to render this GeoPandas data frame and just create all the map for me. So I just say, I read some data. I have a data frame go and plot this on using one of these libraries. And you don't need to really know how they work internally. You just describe your analysis workflow in Python, and then those libraries will create this for you. So what are those libraries? 
me up broadly. Okay, there's a Hologuz family which allows to work with large data. Okay, these are generic libraries which allow to create both interactive plots and maps. On the geospatial side, we have Folium. This is allows to write Python code, which will use leaflet library to create interactive visualization. There are so many of these libraries and they keep coming up. So there was a package that was developed called LeafMap, which is kind of serves as similar to like a matplotlib, where you say, I don't need to learn every library that comes around. It's when the new library comes in, we'll build an interface where you just write the same code and say, I want to plot this using DeckGL. I want to plot this using leaf leaflet. And again, whatever you specify, you use that library to create it. But you don't have to learn to write new code. And so LeafMap is really great. We're going to learn how to use different backends if you want to use MapLibre, but you don't want to learn MapLibre. So I've learned LeafMap. I'll just say, create my map using MapLibre. And you have a MapLibre map without really knowing the interface for that. This makes your learning and workflow much simpler. There's a new library that I like called Lawnboard, which is really great and visualizes very large amounts of data. Again, you can use Lawnboard, but you don't have to. You can just use a map and say, plot this using Lawnboard. And this makes it very easy to integrate and use different libraries. The great thing about LeafMap is also it integrates with different app frameworks like Streamlit. So if you want to use any of those libraries in your apps, you can just use LeafMap, which has support for all of that. The LeafMap is a cousin of another library called GEMap. If you're using Google Earth Engine and you want to create maps and interactive maps, GEMap allows you to do this. We're going to learn Folium, which is kind of forms the base of everything. And then we're going to learn LeafMap, which is going to give you a good foundation to say, regardless of what library you want to use, just learn LeafMap. And then once you know the setup, just change the backend and you'll be able to use any of the libraries that you need. The course is split into two modules. One is on the st static plotting and one is on the dynamic plotting. The module one will start with charts and maps. We'll learn about matplotlib, what it can do, what are some terminologies. We'll create some basic charts, some bar charts and pie charts and so on. Then we'll start focusing on maps. We'll do some analysis using GeoPandas and say, I have a GeoData frame. I want to create a map using that. We'll see how to use that. We'll also work with some really cool solar eclipse data and create a map of a solar eclipse using this base map library called Context Tidy. One of the things I want to teach you in this course is how to work with raster data much more effectively. One of the criticisms of Python is that it's slow when it comes to working with raster data. If you use raster, uh, you would have realized that it's not very good. Fortunately, there is a really good library called X-ray, which is, was designed for climate data, but now it has got extensions to work with geospatial data, which allows you to scale your raster analysis to very large data set. So we'll focus on learning X-ray and working with large amounts of geospatial data, satellite imagery, gridded raster data, climate data, and so on. And we're going to see how to you know, work with them, analyze them, and also visualize those. In Model 3, we're going to start learning about interactive mapping. We'll learn about foliums, folium maps. Now, once we learn about folium, GeoPandas has integration with folium. So you can just say dot explore on a data frame. It will create a nice interactive map for you. Uh, we'll learn how to do this. Then we'll focus on learning leaf map. Once we learn leaf map, we'll integrate that into a dashboard and apps framework called Streamlit. This is a really easy way to create maps, create apps very easily. I've seen people where they want to create an app and you know, in Streamlit, you can just create stuff in a few hours. And you have a really nice looking app that you can go and publish and start, have people start playing. With. Really great for prototyping, really good for data scientists who want to you know, build a model, you want people to explore it interactively, you can build a Streamlit app. The great thing about Streamlit is it also gives you free hosting. So you have an app, you can go and publish it privately or publicly, and you just have a URL that you can go and share with people. So you can learn how Streamlit works. And there are other options as well, apart from Steam, which follow a similar framework. So once you've done this, you'll be able to learn other newer framework as well. I just want to give you a preview of what's coming in the class. So some preview of the visualization that we're going to cover during the class. We'll start by creating, working some crime data for London, and we'll try to learn the basics of plotting. We'll create a pie chart using pandas. We'll create a bar chart just to show the temporal nature of the crime pattern. Then we're going to create different versions of this. We can add labels to this, have a different style. So you can see this is the basic matplotlib style. One of the criticism of matplotlib is matplotlib charts don't look very good. Fortunately, now you have themes. You can set a theme for a chart and the same chart, same code, same render this in a different theme. And suddenly your chart looks much nicer. So learn how to use themes. You can also create 
com more complex chart like this, same chart, but now we want to break it down and say, I want to create a stacked bar chart. Each bar chart is a total, but it's consists of many other parameters. How can we create a stacked bar chart like that? Uh, we'll create maps like this. This is a population density map. We use GeoPandas and learn how to create, you know, this kind of visualization, create a legend and do this. Once you learn how to do this, you should be able to do this, replicate this for any part of the world and create maps like this. We'll take some solar eclipse data and say, I want to plot this data on a map. This base map comes from this context library where you can specify any base map. So we can create different versions of this. So we'll take this, we'll try to create different versions of this. This is using a different base map. We'll then start learning how to create globe maps using Cartopi. Cartopi is a library that allows you to create maps in different projections. Same solar eclipse data, we can render this on a globe. We'll work with some climate data and say, I want to plot some temperature anomalies. We have historic data, we have current data. How to read that, work with it using X-ray and then create a globe map like this. We'll work with some raster elevation data. Uh, one of the common questions it's hard to figure out is how do you add labels to maps? And that's a hard thing. So if you want to add labels to your maps or charts, I will learn how to annotate your charts like this. Then we'll have a, we'll also create some art using Python. And this allows you to kind of explain, explore some different side of mapping where you will take some data and create some beautiful visualization like this. This will be your assignment where we'll give you a setup, we'll explain how to do this, and then you can choose any country of your choice and you'll create a river map like this for your country. And this allows you to take some global hydrological data and render this in a beautiful style like this. We also will work with some open street map data and create an artistic rendering of your city in a different style. So you can pick a city, get open street map data, and then create some interesting visualization like this. And again, we'll show you how to use the libraries that we already learned, but to kind of in a more artistic version. Then we'll switch to doing interactive mapping. This will create interactive maps like this, where you can plot some things on an interactive map. We'll see how to take some street state roads data, render it on a map, and you can explore this interactively. We'll also work with some land cover data and say, so how can we visualize this on a map, add some legends. We'll then work on building apps. So we'll learn how to in integrate those interactive app elements along with other elements like input text box and program this so that when people enter something, you can you know do some things. We'll build apps and again, we'll build an app like this where it's a simple route finder. You can enter some source and destination travel mode and you can render the directions. So you can call some API and get some data and you can build an app like this. So we'll see how to put together stuff you learned into an app that you can publish and host it on Streamlit. We'll also build, learn how to build dashboards where you have buttons and drop downs. People can select the charts will auto update based on the data they selected. And then finally, we'll integrate this charts into an interactive mapping dashboard where you can click on a map, charts update, select, and map zooms in and so on. Right? So we'll put everything together and build an app like this. With that, we'll get started. All of the course material is linked from this URL.